Hello and welcome uh, to the daily cricket show, Cricket Happenings, this on a Saturday with your host Ram. Well, on this daily cricket show, it's going to be previews, three previews coming up. Uh, first, the preview would be of the the first, uh, uh, as you know, India have already won the ODI series 5-1 against South Africa, created history. And now they would be taking on South Africa in the first T20 match of the series tomorrow in the three-match series. And, uh, well, it will be a new-look South African squad with lots of players being rested with the Australian uh, tour coming up where Australia are touring South Africa, as we all know. So I will, I'll be doing a preview of that clash of the first T20 match which is coming up between India and South Africa at the Wanderers in Johannesburg. Um, the other preview would be Sri Lanka, who have been having a victory run on this Bangladesh tour. They beat them in the Test Series, they won the ODI Series, they already taken the first match of uh, the first T20 match of the two match series with today being the final day for Sri Lanka in on the Bangladesh tour they would like to cap it off with a victory and say that they had a fantastic tour of Bangladesh whether that is going to happen will be known today when Bangladesh will get them a last option today to redeem uh, to salvage something for themselves on their home turf by at least getting a, a one win under the belt against Sri Lanka, at least in this T20. And Tommy McBall will be back, so that will greatly strengthen the team because he's in some fine touch right now with the bat. And the other one, which, he, which will be holding a lot of interest with the Trans Tasman T20 Series final coming up. As you know, Australia staged a record, world record chase against New Zealand the other day at Eden Park in England and today we have one final match which is coming up of the Crown Starsman Tri-Series before today it will decide which team will go and meet Australia in the finals of the Crown Starsman 2020 Tri-Series whether it is going to be New Zealand or whether it is going to be England so New Zealand and England clash in the final match of the Crown Starsman Tri-Series today to decide uh, as to who would play Australia and for uh, this uh, clash between England and New Zealand, England are the ones under pressure. Because of their inferior net run rate, they have to, there's an equation that they need to, which I'll be talking about. So these are the uh, three previews uh, that are coming up in this uh, cricket show of mine today. So first, let's head on to the first T20 match, which is coming up between India and South Africa. And this is a different category of fish all together as we all know it's a t20 series but the indians would be totally totally buoyed up right now after uh, winning uh, against south africa and south africa the odi series and i think we are in for a great game of cricket but first i'm going to have a look at the south africans as i said the south africans are not at full strength which will probably give one a feeling that um, you know the South Africans would not, the Indians would be clear favourites uh, to win the first T20 or even the series. But let's have a look at the South African squad as they have a lot of new faces uh, in the squad. And as I said, the reason uh, these players have been rested, the main players have been rested, is due to the fact that the Australians uh, would be, uh, after uh, completing that Trans Tasman T20 series final match, they will be heading towards South Africa and one is really waiting for this wonderful contest uh, between bat and ball when Australia touch South Africa. And uh, let's talk about South Africa. So the South Africa will have an opening pair of Riza Hendricks and John John Smuts. Now John John Smuts is a real walker of the ball and he really likes to hit the ball hard. And so Riz Andrews and John John Smuts would be the openers. A.B. De Villiers would be there. So that really gives them uh, a big uh, fillip, I would say. 
and then they have JP Dumini who would be captaining the side. They have David Miller in their ranks. Hendrich Klaas and the wicketkeeper has already proved something that he belongs to the uh, to the international cricket. Uh, and then uh, we would probably see the middle order bat Christian Jonker probably get his chance today. And uh, uh, the all-rounders would be Andil Felicuayo, it could be Chris Morris, one does not know. Junior Dalla is a pace bowler and he has been given a chance as well. Uh, Dane Patterson, Aaron Fangiso. So it really looks like a very, very new side to me. And um, uh, South Africa have rested all the main bowlers. No Mone Morkel, no Kagiso or Abada, and uh, there no Fernando, no one is there. And uh, it is going to be very interesting. India, absolutely every batsman, if you talk about, are in some great form. Rohit Sharma uh, he, he has got back his form. Shikhar Dhawan is in some, uh, in extremely good nick, according to me. Uh, Kohli, um, he is on a, on a real roll uh, in this particular series. Um, uh, whether it is going to be Manish Pandey or Dinesh Karthik who would be playing, will be open to question. Suresh Raina is making a comeback into the uh, Indian team and Raina has already made it clear that now his his chance to go ahead and forge his place back into the Indian team and he has already, he, he, he looks to be very, very determined and this is an opportunity for him because he wants, he also has uh, hinted that he would like to be a part of the 2019 World Cup in England. Mahendra Singh Dhoni. Now, as far as my, is Mahendra Singh Dhoni would be the one who would be doing the keeping duties and uh, one knows uh, uh, what enormous power he brings to the team. Uh, then Hardik Pandya, uh, one of the very genuine all-rounders and he is someone uh, who is a, a three-dimensional player. Bhuvaneshwar Kumar is back. Just beat Bumrah and Bum Bumrah. Uh, Bhuvaneshwar Kumar and Just beat Bumrah will be hunting with the new ball. And then those risk spinners who really, really bamboozled the South Africans uh, to a really, really submission, I would say, as it's Kuldeep Yadav and Yuzendra Charles. It's going to be played at the Wanderers in Johannesburg and uh, it should be another batsman-friendly pitch, I'm told. Uh, thunder showers are forecast, but not much. Well, so that's the situation as far as India and South Africa. India, as I said, Definitely looking favourites uh, because uh, it is a very new look South African team. But David Villiers, as you know, he makes a big difference, uh, as, we, as we all know. So from here we shift on to the uh, shift on to Bangladesh, where uh, Sri Lanka will be taking on Bangladesh, Bangladesh on the last day of their tour of Bangladesh. As I said, they would like to finish it off on a high. Bangladesh would like to salvage some uh, pride here. Uh, by seeing to it that they at least get one win under their belt against Sri Lankans uh, in this, uh, I mean they can they can go ahead and actually square the T uh, Twenty series one one being this being a, a two match series. So we will have a look here uh, at both the teams. So looking at the teams as far as Bangladesh are concerned, the good thing for them is that Tommy McBall would be back in action. And I can tell you a fact that Tommy McBall is in some great touch right now. And I think that will strengthen this team uh, to a great extent. He would be their best bet uh, for Bangladesh to go and square the uh, series against Sri Lanka today. Tommy McBall uh, and um, so uh, Zakir Hussain will lose his place. Uh, Soumya Sarkar who got his maiden T2050 after making a comeback in the last game uh, is also shown how uh, what a graceful player and how he can flay the balls outside the off stump and Sri Lanka would be making a note of it and trying to bowl a different tack, a different line to Soumya Sarkar. Uh, Mushfiku Rahim, that's a good thing to happen. I think that's the best move that Bangladesh have ever made where they pushed Mushfiqur Rahim uh, after Shakib al Hassan has not been there. They pushed Mushfiqur Rahim up the order and I think that's the best move that Bangladesh have made. Uh, that really, really solidifies, solidifies things for Bangladesh, I reckon. Uh, Mohamed Mithun or Sabi Rahman has not been in some good form. Mohamed Mithun might take his place. 
and then they have Afif Hussain um, um, uh, and Arif Ullak who are new faces but they played in the last match Afif Hussain could not contribute Arif Ullak made only one run not out Mahmoodullah uh, is someone uh, who is also looking pretty good at this stage and the bowling well uh, one saw that Rubel Hussain and the other bowler leaked a lot of runs the other day Saifuddin Rubel Hussain went for plenty when the Sri Lankan firepower batting firepower blasted them and now it's going to be um, whether they would be probably uh, going for whether Abu Jayad or Mehdi Hassan uh, one, one, one has to wait and watch uh, Mustafa Zul Rahman will man the pace resources for sure Nazmul Islam uh, who actually was given the new cherry by the captain to start off proceedings as you would remember and he bowled a decent line I thought so Nazmul Islam and as far as Sri Lanka are concerned as I said uh, to, to me the Sri Lankan team at the top of the order uh, is having a lot of power in their ranks in fact even going down they have some very good all-rounders so Danishka Gunatilaka and Kushal Mendes who scored his maiden 50 the other day um, in uh, opening the innings was very impressive and I think they would stick to the combination Upal Taranga will be coming one drop of late when I've seen Upal Taranga has not been amongst the runs so it would be a very very important that Upul Taranga gets amongst the runs today uh, Dasun Shanaka we saw what he and Pere Tisara Pereira did uh, with the bat the other day to take Sri Lankans to victory in the first match Ndoshan Dikwala uh, is someone who is always a dangerous player according to me because he can play all sorts of strokes and uh, strokes which are not in the book I would say sometimes uh, Dinesh Chandimal will captain and he is also due for, for a good score as well uh, Jeevan Mendes made his comeback uh, he's a very useful all-rounder the bowling would be in the hands of she whether Shehan Madhushanka who was hit for 39 runs of his three overs on his T20 double would be still be persisted with uh, whether or is it going to be Asita Fernando who might come for him Akila Dhananjaya the left arm spinner uh, who has been really been proving very impressive and Isru Udana the left arm seamer so that's the composition and uh, I'm told on this particular pitch uh, 170 75 has been an average score that has been scored this is going to be played at uh, the Silhet and I'm told it's a very picturesque uh, cricket ground Silhet uh, in Bangladesh now we get on to the last preview of this cricket show and that is the Trans Tasman Tri-Series as I'm talking about uh, which is holding a lot of interest after that world record chase done by Australia this match is going to be played at Seddon Park in Hamilton uh, New Zealand uh, and England now I have to tell you one thing that yes it is definitely one knows this is the decider of the Trans Tasman Tri-Series where whichever team wins goes and meets Australia in the final of the Trans Tasman Tri-Series but one has to keep in mind that England are the ones who have to really work for it but given the fact that they have been having an inferior run rate uh, what they need to do is even though they might make a particular score they have to see to it that they keep the opposition uh, uh, I think by uh, it should be a margin of 20 runs so it should have a high margin of victory basically and they should keep the New Zealanders to 20 run short so basically uh, uh, just giving an example probably they score 200 runs they have to restrict New Zealand to 180 uh, so uh, something like that they have to do and even uh, even if it is going to be that New Zealand are going to bat first and England are going to um, chase a particular total uh, England have to hunt down that particular total that New Zealand scores in probably uh, two over shots so probably they have to get, get this down in 18 overs so that is, the, that is something that they need to do so, so England are the ones who are going to be really really working hard at it but as far as New Zealand are concerned if they win the match they sail into the finals uh, just on a victory so New Zealand just need a victory but England have their permutations and combinations uh, um, uh, in front of them as far as England are concerned so look, let's look at the England um, uh, England um, uh, side here uh, now um, uh, as far as the England side is concerned uh, Jason Roy and Alex Wales on the top of the order definitely pack a punch but Jason Roy uh, after that 181 that he scored against Australia uh, in the ODIs has not really uh, got his uh, got into his groove 
and that is what England would be wanting. David Mallon uh, already onto a record because there's only one player uh, in T20 cricket uh, who has actually scored three fifties in the first four matches of the of its of his career. Um, one comes to mind is uh, Sanat Jayasurya of Sri Lanka, the former um, basher from Sri Lanka, uh, Sanat Jayasurya, the opener. David Mallon has been very impressive and always, and one has really, really wondered as to why David Mallon did not play in the ODI series against Australia. Uh, well, um, uh, Morgan uh, is back into business. So Morgan the other day didn't play, but Morgan will be back into business and that will be something that will give a lot of heart to England. Josh Butler, always, always a very, very dangerous customer because you don't, you, you, you don't know what to expect from Josh Butler. Uh, Sam Billings um, uh, has not really uh, gone, uh, gone to hit it big or has his capabilities, but uh, has been getting out uh, a bit uh, cheaply, I would say. Uh, the bowling would be in the hands of David Willey, uh, Chris Jordan, uh, Tom Curran, Mark Wood. So it's a nice bowling combination. Mark Wood, Tom Curran, uh, Chris Jordan. And again, um, it also says that the England once again uh, have a batting order which bats up till number 10. And uh, that has always been, uh, that, that, that is something uh, which is always, uh, they are always at a distinct advantage over there with Mark Wood. Uh, the only genuine tail ender in the team. Uh, as far as New Zealand were con New Zealand are concerned, uh, they, they would also be uh, hoping to fire on all cylinders and they know it's paid in New Zealand. They would like to meet Australia in the finals. And as far as New Zealand are concerned, Martin Guptill is coming on, uh, on, a, on a sort of a knock, uh, not only a knock which was a ton of 49 deliveries, but he went on to surpass uh, one of the greatest uh, uh, limited overs players, Brendan McCullum, and he's the one who has the maximum number of runs in T20 cricket for New Zealand, Martin Guptill. Colin Munro the other day smashed the Aussie attack to absolutely smithereens, I would say. So he's one, and Martin Guptill and Colin Munro make an awesome combination, according to me. Kane Williamson, uh, the captain, who decided to come later down the order, but uh, definitely has already proved his point there. Uh, Ross Taylor, uh, Mark Chapman, the other day was how to hit wicket, but he's a very, very exciting prospect. Tim Seifert, the wicketkeeper, was promoted in the batting order the other day, coming as one drop against the Aussies, but Tim, um, against the Aussies, but Tim Seifert is another one uh, who really holds a lot of promise. Colin D. Granholm, they have a few good all-rounders there. Colin D. Granholm, Mitchell Santner, who didn't play in the last match at Eden Park in Auckland, uh, will be back into the mix after Ben Wheeler leaked 64 runs of his 3.1 overs. And the bowling will be in the hands of the much-experienced Tim Saudi and Trent Bolt, and he solely would be doing leg-spinning duties for New Zealand. So that is, the, as far as the pitch and conditions are concerned, uh, it should be a nice track, which are the traditional boundary dimensions, uh, one probably, um, if, if really one harks back to the uh, past there, uh, one would remember Richard Levy, the South African, who scored the fastest T20 hundred of 45 balls on this particular wicket. And, um, uh, and I think uh, we, are, we are having a clear forecast for Sunday uh, when the match will be played. So it will really decide as to which team will go and meet Australia in the Trans Tasman T20 series finals. So good luck to both the teams and the, may the best team win. And with this being said, it's about, to ti about time for me to sign off on this cricket show uh, and see you all uh, tomorrow on my next cricket show.